I'm Michelle Coons. I am the Curator of Archaeology here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Archaeology is the study of ancient people by looking at the stuff that they left behind and it's like a big puzzle. We take all these little pieces and try and put them together to understand what people were doing in the past. Well I think that archaeology it lets us connect with the people of the past. You know we're here for just a moment in time and people have been here for the last 200,000 years and so we get a glimpse at what humanity has been like and how we've changed and what problems we've faced and how things are not that different now that they really were in the past and it really gives us some perspective on today. So I became interested in archaeology when I was a kid and I had an uncle who was always talking about archaeology and interesting things. He grew up in England and he would find chariots in his yard he would tell me about and all kinds of fascinating things. But I grew up on the beach and so I was just inspired by these stories and I spent my entire childhood looking in the rocks to make discoveries, different shells, different things that people left behind. I would always bury my toys on the beach and excavate them. So it was just this fun thing I did as a kid. And when I got a little bit older, I didn't really know that I could do archaeology as a career. There wasn't any real role models around. There wasn't anybody that said, oh, this is something that people actually do. People just thought I was kind of crazy. They're like, oh, that's in the movies. When I entered college, I was studying physical therapy and um, biology, and I had this opportunity to enter into a, a class for volunteer service, volunteer outreach, and so I signed up for the class and was chosen to be one of the people to attend, and we were supposed to go to Mexico, but when we got there the first day, they said the trip to Mexico was canceled and we're now going to Bolivia, and so I ended up going to Bolivia. I had no idea even where Bolivia was, which is pretty embarrassing, but at, this, at that point in my, in my life, I just I did, had not been exposed to South America at all, and um, I ended up in Bolivia, and it was just one of the most mind-blowing experiences. The people, the culture, the food, everything was so new and so exciting, and so I immediately came back and changed my major to anthropology from there. So anthropology is composed of four sub-disciplines. Anthropology being the study of people, the study of humankind. And it, is, it consists of cultural anthropology, which is the study of more modern day cultures. Uh, archaeology, which is the study of ancient people. Physical anthropology, which is the study of the human body. And linguistics, or language. It's just, it's so exciting. I have to say that I really do think I have the coolest job because there's just, you're constantly able to discover new things and add to that whole idea of knowledge and what we know about humankind and in the past and for the future. So it's just, there's so many things that excite me. There's also um, a unique style of ceramic that's found on Likapa A that I call the well, I love the fact that I've gotten to travel all over the world to do my job. I've spent many years working in Peru and Bolivia. I've worked in China. I've gotten to go to places in Turkey and in um, Greece. And I love that whenever I go to places that anywhere in the world, I just get really excited about the archaeology. So I'm not always the best travel partner if you want to sit on a beach because <laughs> we will be going and seeing ruins. <laughs> Archaeology can be like Indiana Jones. <laughs> it's not always like that. There are sometimes opportunities and instances where you do find yourself discovering really exciting things and I fortunately have been on excavations where we've discovered priestesses with gold and all kinds of museum quality artifacts in these massive tombs so much fun, but those are just a blink of the eye in the amount of behind the scenes work that goes into those types of expeditions. My job as a curator is quite diverse. I do all kinds of different things. I conduct original research, so I go out into the field and I do excavations. I do what we call survey work, so it's basically walking around and looking for archaeological sites and artifacts. It's really fun. Um, I work in the collection, so I work with materials that we already have here, um, so I can help to facilitate research for people coming in. I do research myself on those collections, and then I do a lot of outreach as well, and so just talking about why archaeology is so great <laughs> to anybody that'll listen. The anthropology collection here at the museum is quite diverse. We have 
materials from world anthropology, so world ethnography, with stuff that's from everywhere in the world, from more modern times going back to more ancient materials. We see ourselves as stewards of the past, or protectors of the past, or protectors of even the present, where we keep these materials in perpetuity in the public trust for the, for the public good. And so people can come in and look at these collections, they can study them, they can analyze them, and it, we see it as our responsibility to make sure that nothing happens to them because it really is this record of humanity and in a way that you know, we might not have in a, such a digital world these days. Working in the collections is always fun because there's always things to be discovered, so to speak. And so when I first when I first started working here, I opened up a cabinet and I saw all of these pots from Bolivia. And having worked in Bolivia before, I was floored because I've never seen a collection like this outside of Bolivia. And I couldn't believe that they were here in this museum and that they hadn't been published or people didn't know about them and so it really I got really excited and I've been uh, writing about them and doing all kinds of analysis on the clays and so it's been really really fun to to make that discovery right under my own nose. <laughs> I've always been interested in doing archaeology in my backyard so to speak not literally digging my backyard but every time I've been working in some part of the world, say in Bolivia or Peru, I've tried to always have a project going where I live because I think it's really important to have that connection to the people that lived where you live. I was exploring and just thinking about archaeology and the people who lived here before and Magic Mountain just kept coming up as this really, really important site that no one really knew about because it hadn't been published properly or it's not in um, it's not in the travel guides to coming to Colorado but it's this what I kept coming back to is that that's this really really exciting site and it, it should be a part of our local lore our knowledge and we should all appreciate these people that lived here and so I thought this was a great opportunity to explore that and try and just highlight uh, the ancient history of Denver. Magic Mountain the site is in Golden and it's been known about for quite a while but people starting in the 1930s began picking things up and bringing them to this institution. People were picking things up there for much, much longer before that, but in the 30s is when the first artifacts came here and when um, museum employees realized that this was a potentially exciting archaeological site right here. There was an expedition there in the 40s and, and some of the um, materials were recovered and brought to the to this museum. Um, there was another excavation there in the 50s. Those materials went to Harvard, but the book was published through Denver Museum. Then again, there was an excavation in the 90s, and the, all of those materials we have here too. And so we just have this great history of objects and materials from this particular site, and not a lot has been done with them. And so this working with the Magic Mountain Collection is a great opportunity to rediscover what's already in our collection and then starting the archaeological project out at the site is a way that we can bring in new technologies and new techniques to studying a site um, in the 21st century. Technology has advanced over the last 50 years and we now have better computers and better software and better instruments so we can see things that we couldn't have seen in 50 years, 50 years ago and even, even 25 years ago. In August, we did ground penetrating radar and magnetometry surveys, which are two really big words, I understand that. But ground penetrating radar shoots electromagnetic energy into the ground and we can see below the surface in three dimensions. And so we can tell how deep something is below the surface. Magnetometry is a complementary technique that shows us changes in the magnetic field of materials. So if any time someone dug a hole, we'll see that it looks different from what's next to it, so that surrounding soil. So holes show up really well, um, and also hearths where people would have their fire. So when you combine the two techniques, oftentimes what we'll see is 
we can see the walls of a structure, how deep they are, and sometimes where a fire may have been inside of the pit structure. And that's what we found at Magic Mountain in at least one location. From past work at Magic Mountain, we know that people lived there for about 6,000 years or so, from about 5,000 BC at least, probably even earlier, we just don't have the evidence yet of that, of them living there before that, all the way until about 1,000 years ago or 1,000 AD. And so in the earlier time period, this is what we call the early archaic period, people were hunting and gathering and they were using this site as probably a campground. And they would come and they would maybe process some of the hunted, hunted animals they found and do some gathering in that area. Through time, it became a semi-permanent location where people lived and we know that because in the later time period, so about a thousand years ago, this is when we have these house structures. So people were living there for extended periods of time. They were making ceramics at this point too. And so we know when they're making ceramics, they were probably staying and not as mobile. There are many questions that we can ask of the site, many, many questions, and that's what's exciting. So we are in the process of developing some of them. One of the major questions is we want to know exactly what these houses look like and how many people may have lived in them and how many, it would be wonderful if we could figure out how many there actually were at the site. So these are some of the things that we're looking at, but then we're looking at you know, what kinds of tools they were using and how those tools change through time. We can really think about asking all kinds of different things of this particular place that people thought was very important in the past and still enjoy today. I love that I can come up with a question that I find interesting and go out and try to answer it. I mean, how many people get to do that where I can say, I think that this is fascinating. Let's go figure this out. and. I love that about being an archaeologist. I love being able to use all different kinds of tools and techniques available to me. I love the fact, just the sense of discovery, that you can make these dis small discoveries, big discoveries every day, and it just keeps it really exciting. If you want to find out about the archaeology in your backyard, go find the local museums and ask them if what they know about the past human history, if there's any sites that you can visit, if there's any way that you can get involved and in what you can learn. There's all kinds of different jobs in archaeology. There's everything from what we call shovel bums, so people who work in the field and they go from dig to dig and they are technicians more or less and they are just hired laborer and that's a really fun job that you can have when you're a bit younger and all the way up to professors and museum curators. So there's all different levels of jobs as in archaeology, which is great because many people can um, can participate, but there's also all kinds of volunteer opportunities. Don't give up on these things, you know, even though people tell you this isn't a real career, this isn't something that actual people do, that's not true. There are people that do these types of jobs, and whether it be an archaeologist or a geologist or a rocket scientist, you know, you can actually do this. And if you put your mind to it and work really hard, I mean, it's not easy. It's not just they're gonna give you this job. You would definitely have to put the time in and the effort in, but you can be and do whatever you want.